everyone. Welcome to Learning at Leventar. This video is going to be about how we can frame a four variable K map and use it to simplify and solve combinational logic problems. Let's dive into the video. Say, let's take up the example of this problem where we need to find or implement this logical equation. So here I have four inputs A, B, C, D, which would be used to implement the function f, and that is given by 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 15. So say I have been given a problem like this. So these are nothing but the min terms. So this would be uh, expressing the sum of min terms. Now we need to find a simple way of finding the expression, the Boolean expression and implementing it. Since there are four variables involved, we will require a grid with 16 squares because 2 to the power 4 is 16, right? So let me draw the grid here with four rows and four columns. Now, we are going to write out the input, the MSBs here and the LSBs here. You could even switch the positions, but then we have to be careful with the numbering. So in order to ensure uniformity and uh, less errors, let's consider this part to have the MSBs and this would have the LSB. Then we are going to write out the possible combinations of A and B. So there are two bits here, so it could either be 0, 0. 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So we're going to write it in the gray code order so that we are able to use the absorption law by applying it on adjacent cells. So to ensure adjacency, we write it in the gray code order. Again, C and D would also take up the four combinations 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0. We can now start numbering these grids. So with practice, uh, you would be able to take less efforts to write out the numbers. But in the beginning stage, you can do it by looking at these two, uh, the column and the row. So this is 0, 0, 0, 0, which stands for 0. This is going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, which is 1. 0, 0, 1, 1 is 3. 0, 0, 1, 0 is 2. Then... 0, 1, 0, 0 is 4, 0, 1, 0, 1 is 5, 0, 1, 1, 1 is 7, 0, 1, 1, 0 is 6. Then 1, 1, 0, 0 is nothing but 12. 1, 1, 0, 1 is 13. 1, 1, 1, 1 is 15 and 1, 1, 1, 0 is 14. 1, triple 0 is 8. 1, 0, 1, 0 is 1, 0, 0, 1 is 9. This is 11 and this is 10. So if you look at it, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then we come down 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. So this is how we can number the four variable K map. Now, these are the min terms that belong to this expression, which means these min terms would ensure that the output f is holding good or it is going to be true or its value is going to be high. So for the box 7 or min term 7, I'll put a 1. Again, 9 will be 1. 10 will be 1. 11 is going to be 1. 12, 13, 15 is going to be 1. So these are the min terms that are there, which means that the rest of the boxes can be filled up with zeros. Because for all the other combination of inputs, my output is going to be false. So this is how we fill up the K-map. We are now going to obtain the expression in the sum of products or SOP form. So in order to do that, we are going to be grouping all the ones in this grid rather than the zeros. If we would have required the product of sums, in that case, we would be grouping the zeros. So now we are going to group the ones. In order to form the group, we can either group 
a pair of ones or we can form a quad or an octet so in this four cross four grid these are the only possible uh, groups sizes we can have so if you notice all of these are going to be in the powers of 2 so a pair would be 2 power 1 a quad would be 2 power 2 and the octet is 2 power 3 so we cannot have a group of ones with just six ones in it even though it is an even number so we are not looking for even numbers out here we are looking of uh, looking out for powers of 2 the larger our group of 1 is, the simpler our expression would be. So it would be more optimized and easy to implement in the hardware. So whenever we form the groups, we should look out for the largest group possible. So in this case, we can see that there are 4 ones that are lying next to each other, adjacent to each other and they can be put into one group. So this I am going to form as the first group. Then we have another group over here. So these two, they are a pair of ones. Similarly, these two, we can form a pair of ones and these two form a pair of ones. So now in this uh, K map, we have three pairs and we have one quad. So let's write out the expression for this quad alone. So here, we need to analyze the rows and the columns to obtain the expression. In some of the books, you would notice that instead of the 0, 0s, 0, 1s, they would have written A dash, B dash, A dash, B, A, B, and A, B dash, C dash, D dash, C dash, D, C, D, and C, D dash. This is useful in many cases. It uh, makes it easier for you to analyze and write out the expression for each of the groups. So if you look at this quad and if you analyze the rows, it is spanned over these two rows. So here we have only A that is common over these two rows. So this quad is going to have the term or the literal A. Next, we scan the columns. Looking at these two columns, we see that only uh, D is consistent, C dash and C. So the first column is having a C dash, the second column is having a C. So the number changes from C dash to C. So we are not going to take up any literal which is changing, only the literal which remains consistent over both the columns where the entire quad is spanning, we are going to retain that. So that would be D for this particular group. So literal A that is obtained from scanning of the rows and the literal D obtained from scanning of the columns will be anded with each other. So the expression for this particular quad in this K map is A dot D. Now let's uh, look at the pairs that we have. We have three pairs over here. So let's analyze one pair at a time. Let me call this as the first pair. So this pair is spanning across this particular row. Here, the literal A and B are consistent for both the ones or this entire group. So therefore, it's going to have the term AB in it. When we look at the column, we see that only C dash is consistent for both the ones in this group. So for this, for both of these columns, only C dash should be retained. The other literal D, it changes from D dash to D. Therefore, we cannot use it in this group. So the expression for this particular group becomes A, B, C dash. Let's look at the second pair. So here we see that it is spanned over the last row where its expression would be A, B dash. So the expression will have A, B dash in it. Now let's analyze the columns. Here we see that only C is consistent. It is one in both of these row or columns. So it remains C in this column and it remains C in the last column too. So therefore C would be retained for this particular pair. So A B dash C is the expression for this pair. Let's look at the third pair. In the third pair, we see that it is spanned across the two rows where only B is consistent. So this group will contain a B. It is not going to contain any A term because looking at the two rows, 
it is changing from a dash to a so it should not be present in the expression so let's go to the column this particular pair is spanned only over the column where we have one one so therefore c d will be also present in this term so the expression for this third pair is actually b c d so the expression that we obtained for these three uh, group of uh, pairs pairs of ones would be b c d plus a b c dash plus a b dash c so now putting together the expression of the quad and the expression obtained for the pairs we'll find the expression for f as b c d plus a b c dash plus a b dash c plus a d so that's the expression for this particular boolean logical equation let me now show you some grouping scenarios that might arise when you encounter different problems but before we do that we need to understand about the folding of a k map so a k map can be folded along this vertical line dotted line in this manner as the arrow shows so it's like folding a square paper into half taking making this uh, rightmost edge to meet the leftmost edge and then you'll see that these four cells and these four cells would be overlapping each other and therefore you can call them to be adjacent similarly these cells and these cells will be overlapping when you fold it and therefore they can be called as adjacent so by using this adjacency we can form larger groups for example if there were ones placed in these cells so we can form a large group which forms an octet in this manner and the expression in that case would be obtained like this so when we analyze the rows we see that the octet is spanning over all the four rows which means that both the literal a and b will be changing from 0 to 1 right if you observe a it's not consistent on for all the four rows it's changing from 0 to 1 over here and if you observe b b is becoming 0 to 1 here and then it remains 1 again it goes back to 0 so all the four ones encounter changing literals so we cannot have a and b in the expression for this octet so let's look at the columns so we need to analyze these two columns when we do that we see that the literal d remains zero for both the columns which means this expression will contain d dash c dash will not be there because it's actually c dash for only this particular row it becomes c for the last row so therefore c is changing we should not include that for this octet's expression so finally the expression for this octet remains d dash so we see that we obtain just one particular literal and we can use just one gate to implement this entire group so the larger the group we form the better it would be let me show you another scenario where the ones are placed in only the four corners so then how would we group that so if you see you can again fold this along this vertical axis or you can imagine that there is an horizontal axis that's available along which you can fold this k map in that case the four corners would overlap and therefore they can be called as adjacent cells so now that they are adjacent we can form an quad because there are four ones we can group them in the following manner as shown with the green pen and that would be called a quad now what would be the expression for this quad so if you see it is spanning over the top and the bottom row where b is consistent at 0 so this expression will have a b dash a is changing right so we don't have a now let's analyze the two columns where it is spanning we see that d is consistent over the two columns it is zero so therefore i'll include a d dash c is changing from zero to one so it will not be the expression for this particular quad so b dash d dash is the expression for this particular group another scenario say i have ones over here in this manner then here i can 
form two quads because if I fold it along this horizontal axis, these two ones at the bottom row will overlap with the top row ones. So that would form one quad. And the expression for that would be, since this is spanning over the top and the bottom row, we see that B dashed is consistent. And if you analyze the columns, we see that D is consistent. Now let's look at this quad. This quad is in this manner. It is spanning over the middle two rows where we see that B is consistent. And if we look at the columns, we see that D dash is consistent. So the expression for this particular K map becomes B dash D plus B D dash. So that's all with this video on four variable K map. I hope uh, the video uh, was useful to you all where it discusses about different combinations of groups that are possible and how you should write out the expression for a pair, a quad or an octet. Just remember that the larger the group, the smaller your expression will be and therefore more optimized your final logical circuit would be. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to this channel.